This video has been brought to you by Wix and we'll show you how they helped us make a new periodic table later in the episode. Everyone knows that Mendeleev invented the periodic table, but did he really invent it? We're here to find out. We're here in St. Catherine's College, Cambridge, where the well-known chemist Peter Wathers has assembled a unique collection of early books about the periodic table, including, I believe, some real treasures from Mendeleev's output. Let's go in and see what he's got. Well, I think uh, most people would expect us to begin with Mendeleev's first yeah. periodic table. So this features in volume one of his textbook, yeah. The System of Chemistry here, and it was literally, this is just added in at the beginning. So this is the first published periodic table, wow. which is really rather nice. So how, how is your Russian then? You can, you can read this okay, can you? System Elementor. So it's based on their atomic weight and their chemical properties. So this is a system of the elements, yes, chemical yes. elements. So of course the immediately uh, noticeable first thing is it's the wrong way round from our modern periodic table. Mendeleev has arranged his groups horizontally in this, which is fine. So for instance we see lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. Now he's got this one wrong, he's got a few wrong. Yes. Has he got any elements that don't exist? Um, yes, there is uh, somewhere didymium. We, we say it doesn't exist, but of course was resolved, exist. exactly. Explain to me, what's the book and why did he wait till the last minute for the best part? Uh, well, <laughs> he was writing a textbook of inorganic chemistry yes. and he'd already written volume one uh, and this had actually already been printed. Yes. And it was as he was beginning to write uh, further parts of this, he thought, well, where am I going to go next? In the, yes. in, well, we won't say the periodic table because there wasn't one, yes. but after discussing related elements, he thought, yes. well, which, which, which set yes. of elements shall I do next? So he wanted to come up with a system and this is his system. But the books were already printed, this, this first volume. And so this, a few leaves here were just sent in to literally be stuck in, to be pasted in to the printed books, which is remarkable. This is rather a nice copy actually, yes. because it was, we think the first owner was uh, a lady uh, perhaps one of his students. Yes. Somebody's made notes. Yes, I'm not quite sure what these are yet. I'm going to have to work through that. <laughs> it is quite a, a rare book, or at least uh, we don't know how many co uh, copies there are outside of Russia. We think this is the only copy in the UK. So I mentioned that the groups in this are arranged horizontally, yes. but in the second volume, which came out two years later, He's, he's changed this, he's rearranged his periodic table to be uh, far more recognisable to our eyes. Uh, now this one is, is rather um, tricky and fragile. It's, um, so this is in the beginning of volume two of his book. Uh, so now you see we have hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium going yes. vertically down. So this looks much more like our modern periodic table. And what is this extra bit here? Again, he, he, he developed lots of different arrangements, actually. Yes. Um, and so this is also quite good. I mean, it looks like a periodic table. So some of group two appear here and some over here. Um, so magnesium is over here uh, as opposed to in the group here, yes. similarly with sodium and so on. He had group um, 1A and 1B. E. Yeah. Um, with the, you know, and there's some sense to this, of, yeah. this, of course, as you know. I think the fact that this is now uh, a rather more extensive fold-out chart uh, just shows the importance that he attached to this, uh, to his system. And obviously, this is what he's you know, absolutely famous for now. What he's written here is the natural system of the elements, mm -hmm. and he's put his name after it. So, I mean, he's really gluing his name to the periodic table straight away. He really did this, actually. So this is, I think, one of the reasons why Mendeleev is often cited as the discoverer of the periodic yes. table. He really promoted this. Yeah. Um, he says it was his discovery that the, the system, the law, uh, the periodic law, but there were other people, as we shall see. Yeah. So this was his first textbook. And I so say it came out in, in two, it's usually published in two volumes, although it came out perhaps in four. Um, and this second volume was two years after the very first table that we saw. But actually he did publish a more extensive um, journal article yes. where he really describes the periodic system. Now this apparently was only printed in 80 copies. So now we really are quite lucky to have, have one of these here. So this is the very first volume of the Russian Chemical Society, the Journal of the Russian Chemical Society. So this then is Mendeleev's real first announcement yes. of his periodic table and, and the system. So this is uh, the discovery of the periodic law, as he called it. And obviously he, he realised that there was something quite fundamental behind this. And perhaps the reason why his 
uh, table and system caught on more than others mm. is because he was also predicting properties of the elements, very yes. detailed predictions. Uh, and that's perhaps some of the other discoverers didn't go into the same level of detail that he did. But we see exactly the same table that we saw in, yeah, in the this, textbook, yeah. yes. Now, I think what's really fun is, uh, so we see this amazing discovery, yeah. this amazing announcement, to see the first report of this in English. Yes. Okay, and this yeah. was from, uh, from this, this the same year, and it's in um, the Chemical News. Now, this was a publication by William Crookes. He was the editor, yes. the discoverer of thallium, of course. And it was, it was said that he just reported anything, absolutely everything yeah. that was ever, sort of anything chemical appeared in here. And so in here we have, uh, this here is the very first announcement in English yeah. of Mendeleev's system. Can you read it out? Yes, it says, uh, atomic weights, Mendeleev. This paper contains a new plan of grouping the elements according to the numerical value of their atomic weights in the following manner. Now you have to listen carefully here. So lithium seven, Beryllium 9.4, boron 11, carbon 12, nitrogen 14, oxygen, he's given the symbols here, so O16, then Fe19, and Na23. So they even get the order wrong. Yeah. They, they, there's a misprint where they put uh, the symbol for iron yeah, instead, instead of, of chlorine, yeah. <laughs> which I think is wonderful, isn't it? But yeah. that's it. This tiny little paragraph here is, is, is the first announcement yeah. of the day. And it was completely overlooked, really, yeah. at the time. Nobody really took much notice yes. of this. And this was because I think, well, people really took notice when the first yes. elements were discovered yes. that agreed with his predictions. Yes. So he says at the end here, the author points out that this grouping of the elements expresses the law according to uh, which the elements can combine with oxygen. As you see, this publication then in the Chemical News was in uh, December the, uh, was that the 10th, 1869. So it's the same yeah, year, yeah. yes. But it's took quite a long time from March to December. Yes, but this is because they were picking up yeah. these entries in other foreign journals, as they say, yes. here, as they describe it. But what I think is particularly nice, where it says, um, the author points out that this grouping of the elements, well, they don't actually show any grouping in this because they just give the first line yeah. of his table, which is ridiculous. But, but it also shows that more senior chemists are notorious for not recognizing breakthroughs when they happen. <laughs> and Absolutely. things haven't changed. Yeah. So while we're on Mendeleev, I thought I'd show you this. This is rather nice. So this has been described as his master's thesis, this, yeah. this tiny little pamphlet here. There's evidence that he's thinking of atomic weights and organization of things in here. We see lots of nice formula for different compounds and so on. So it says here that it was chosen for the defense of the degree of the master of chemistry. Uh -huh. In some bibliographies, you see this is described as his thesis. But it turns out that this is just the synopsis. Yes. And I'm delighted that we also have the uh, whole thesis here, which is really wow. rather nice. And we haven't found another copy of this recorded in any library to date. There must be copies in Russia, of course, but uh, we haven't found any others yet. So I think he's looking for specific volumes. Volume. So these are yes. essentially what we would now call molar volumes yes. of compounds. And again, this is starting thinking about looking for trends and patterns here. Mendeleev went through eight different uh, editions of his textbook. And of course, he had to introduce a whole new group with the noble gases. These don't feature in the first. But I think this one is rather fun. So I think this is his last. It's not an edition of his textbook, but it does contain his last periodic table. Published in a <laughs> remarkable journal. It's, it's crazy. In a serialized form in this journal with all sorts of strange articles in. So this, as I say, this really is quite an, an odd thing to find this final periodic table in here. And so this was, I think, his last version of the periodic table. But he made a slight error here because he put the noble gases in as group zero, which makes perfect sense. It's the, uh, the valency is zero. But this meant then he put helium just before lithium. And then this therefore suggested with hydrogen above lithium, that there might be another element above helium and one more above hydrogen. So he has X and Y yeah. as two unknown elements. Now, one of these, it was thought, had been discovered in the sun. Yeah. This was coronium, yes. which it turns out to be a highly oxidized uh, iron of iron. Oh. But the other one he thought was um, undiscovered, and he proposed the name newtonium, oh. which I think is rather nice, which yes. brings us back to Cambridge. And well, <laughs> you could argue that the neutron should go there, and I've got at least one periodic table that has neutron on it. 
So you could pop in the neutron there if you want to. Mm, you could. <laughs> this is the fourth edition of his textbook where the first periodic table appeared. But this is an amazing copy. This is actually a presentation copy from Mendeleev. This was presented to the Scottish chemist Alexander Crum Brown, who was uh, one of the people who developed organic structures. Yes, I've heard of him. Did he read Russian or...? <laughs> well, or... yes, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> I don't know. Mendeleev visited Crum Brown in yes. Edinburgh. Yes, it says Edinburgh there. Yep, to receive an honorary degree. So this was at that time. So it's, it's dated there, 1884, which is really rather lovely, isn't it? How much is that worth? <laughs> I have no idea how much this would be worth now, but it's, it's really quite fun. So this is the, the version of the periodic table that appears in here. Interestingly enough, this one page yeah. uh, appeared at auction last week yes. um, in Christie's. Uh, it was also signed by Mendeleev, yeah. like our book is, yes. and it sold for over £20,000. £20,000 for one page? Yes. So how many pages have you got here? <laughs> I don't think we can extrapolate like that. But I think this, this complete volume would yeah. be quite pricey. Yeah. Now, I want to go back to Mendeleev's first published periodic table. So this was the one from 1869. And the reason I want to do this is because I want you to see another one from an English chemist called William Odling. So this is five years earlier. So this is from 1864. So, for instance, we have sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium... Now, he's put lithium, wrong symbol, up here. And, of course, Mendeleev gets his, uh, includes lithium here. But for group two, we have glucinium, so the old name for beryllium, uh, and lead here. And then we have magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. And group two, we have beryllium, magnesium. So they're separate from the other members, calcium, strontium, barium. And, again, Mendeleev puts lead in the same group, understandably. But when we go to compare some of the other groups in the main group, the, they get even closer, the similarities. So group three or 13 of the periodic table is a tricky one because, of course, they only had a couple of elements. So Mendeleev only knew of uh, boron and aluminium. So we have boron, aluminium, unknown, and uranium and gold from uh, Mendeleev's. And here we have boron, aluminium, a space, again, where gallium will come, and then again, uranium there. So they're really very, very similar, these tables. When we go to um, group 15 or 5, nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, arsenic, antimony, bismuth, completely right in Odling's table and completely right in Mendeleev's nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth. So where did he publish this? So this is in um, a journal with, it's not a chemical journal, so this is the uh, Journal of Science. So there are uh, many different articles in this from related yeah. subjects. But he didn't really push this in the same way that Mendeleev did later. And he didn't really um, produce such accurate predictions for the properties of the missing elements. And that was the thing that really caught people's attention yes. from Mendeleev's version. And what did he call this, his article? I, th I think it's just an arrangement so the, the title of his article is On the Proportional Numbers. Of the Elements. But so he was quite an eminent scientist. He was a fellow of the Royal Society. Yes. It shows that you not only got to discover something or propose something, but other people have to find out about it. And if you publish it somewhere where nobody else sees it, then you might as well not publish it at all. So what's his name? William Odling. Well, you must say that Odling does not have the sound of Mendeleev's name, does it? It's interesting that the groups also are going horizontally yes. as well, like Mendeleev's first version. Professor Polyakov, did you know about this before today? Is this well, I, I, I knew that there were some previous ones, but I'd never realised how similar it was. Don't you think that perhaps the reason they go horizontally because it's easier from the point of view of putting it in a book? You sure. don't have to change the landscape format of the page. Well, but then again, of course, I mean, the, so the arrangement by mass is now going vertically yeah. downwards. So yeah. you've, <laughs> something's got to go down yes. and something's got to go across. If this was five years before, isn't it conceivable that Mendeleev saw this and it inspired his arrangement? It is possible that Mendeleev uh, may have seen this. It was, I yeah. think this was translated into Russian, not by him. I... But <laughs> he, so... he says he wasn't aware of it. Oh, he, was, he was asked about it, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. But th and this is not the only British chemist yeah. who developed yeah. the periodic table. Perhaps more famous is Newlands and his law of octaves. 
Now, eventually, Newlands really wanted to try to establish some claim yeah. to the periodic table. So he published this lovely little book um, where all of his collected journal articles yeah. were assembled together. Uh, now, I have, I have one of the original ones to show you in a moment, but this is, this is a nice copy. So this is uh, to uh, Grenville Williams. He was uh, one of the people that worked with Crookes in the discovery yeah. of thallium. So uh, Crookes mentions him at the end of his paper, which is rather nice. So this shows uh, his attempts at um, coming up with a periodic yeah. table. But these were initially published in the chemical um, news. And so this is the first version of Newland's announcement when he's look, beginning to look for relationships yes. between the atomic masses. So um, this is in here uh, on relations among the equivalents. In this version, he's looking for um, relationships between the what we would now call atomic weights. Um, some of them are out by a factor of two, and this is because you know, they, they just were not known at the time. So many of these look, look wrong to us. So they are halved, so magnesium 12, oxygen 8, uh, and so on. But some of them are correct. So lithium 7, fluorine 19. Yes, and nitrogen 14. So his first table, though, we see um, comes a little bit later. Here are some of his early tables. So again, this one is going across. So we have hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, uh, then bromine and iodine. So this is very similar to Mendeleev's version. This is from, this particular one is from 1865. Did Mendeleev, was he also asked about Newland's work? Uh, Mendeleev just said that his version was, was very different and that he really discovered the, the periodic law. So interestingly, most of the copies of this that I've seen yeah. Um, are signed by the author. So actually one of those books where it's the very rare copy that isn't signed by the author. But this was because he was trying to promote his system to show that he had a sense of priority uh, for the discovery. So what is this table here? Perhaps I'll this let you should, take yep. it out in case I damage it. Um, so the elements in order of atomic weight, horizontal arrangement. So again, this is um, this is fairly similar to Mendeleev's. Uh, what uh, Newland's noticed, of course, is that when the elements are arranged, when we come to the uh, by order of their atomic weights, as they were yeah. known at the time, um, when you come to the eighth element uh, in the order, we have something with similar properties. Yes. And so this was his, his, his discovery, yes. that, uh, and why he called it the law of octaves, yes. because of course it's similar with the notes yes. on a piano. Yes. Yes. So when you go eight up, you get yes. to a similar related yes. uh, note. But of course, also missing from this, because they were not discovered at the time were the noble gases. Yes. And this means when you include those, it will be every ninth element. So then it would be the law of non A's. <laughs> this is really very interesting. So these are all quite fun, yeah. but actually what I'm going to show you now is regarded as perhaps the very first periodic table. And do you know who this is by? No. No, this is a French mineralogist called Alexandre Emile Beguier de Chancourtois. And that one definitely doesn't roll off the tongue. No. Uh, now, before I show you his table, I shall show you a... We're fortunate enough to have this. This is a collection of his off-prints. And this was given to one of his colleagues. And he included a, a, a photograph. So this is actually a photograph of uh, Beguier de Chancourtois. Uh, and signed by him, which is rather nice. His arrangement, this, nobody knows of him, and it really didn't catch on, but this was seven years before Mendeleev's version. The reason this did not catch on is because, well, for starters, he was a mineralogist, so he wasn't really being read by the chemists of the day. But the main reason is he published this in a journal with no diagram. So there, is no, there was no table in the original journal version. However, um, he also had some off-prints made, yes. as he did in, the, in those days. Uh, so these were separate printings of the article. And with this, he did have a, um, an illustration yes. made. And this one, I need to have some space here. So let's open yeah, this yeah, out. Yeah. And this is the reason that it, nobody knew of it, because it couldn't be included in the publication because this is, is so large. So you can see why the, the publishers were reluctant to include this in the journal article. Yes. So this is printed on card. In, in, uh, it's got red, black, and green colors in it, and it's about five foot long. But now what we're looking at here, so what do we need for a periodic table? We need all of the then known elements to be arranged in order of their, well, in this case, atomic weights, 
because of course nobody had any idea of atomic number at this time. And so these are all the elements arranged according to their atomic weight and we need to look for the repeating patterns. And this is, the way he's done this is these are arranged, this should be a cylinder. So at the top here we have um, a view from above of a cylinder. Again we're going round um, 16 units around here. And so this would be 16 atomic weight units, yes. atomic mass units, and then we come to an element with a similar property. So this is going to be arranged on a, on a it'll form a helix, so this is being wound round the, the cylinder here. So for instance, we have, here is lithium, and then he found that elements with similar properties are aligned in the vertical column. So we have lithium here, sodium, potassium, and then if we go a bit further down, rubidium. That is amazing. I've never... I've not heard of him, I've never seen anything like this, and it's extraordinary. Well, this, this is really rather rare, because this was only in the off-prints, yes. not in the journal. So this is actually um, a, a signed copy, again, so this was a presentation copy from um, uh, Baguia here. And it's the survival of these charts, and he also changed these. So this we think is the very, very first version. So it says at the top here, the 7th of April, 1862. And there are slightly later versions where he modified this and so added a later date underneath where he just tweaked things. Because the real problem with this is, is well, what were the atomic weights of the elements? And this is where the, the problem came. And so actually we see on the table silicon, and silicon is also here, and uh, it's on here a third time as well, somewhere. So it's mentioned three times. And this is because he wasn't entirely sure what the mass, the atomic weight of silicon should be. Yeah. And this was because they, they understood that a certain mass of one element combined with a certain mass of another, but they didn't know what the formula for the product was. So we now know that when you combine silicon and oxygen, you have silicon dioxide. But they didn't know this. They knew that a certain mass is combined. And so depending on what the formula for silicon um, oxide is, silicon uh, silica, um, this would give rise to different masses. But he included them all in, which is great. Do you think Mendeleev gets too much credit? Is history written wrong? Is history right? What does this make you feel? I don't know what to walk away thinking. Well, I think you cannot alter history because sometimes two people or more discover something, but one of them has a more profound influence than the others. And so you can't, it's not enough to say, I discovered this first. You've got to look and see what influ influence you had on people that came after you. And sadly, sometimes it's not the first person that has the real influence, particularly because the second person may get a bit more momentum from knowing that somebody else has had a similar idea. So they're, first of all, pushing their idea harder, but they also have a bit more confidence in their idea. I think it's, it's no coincidence that actually six different scientists from around the world all independently came up with their versions of what we would now call the periodic table, um, all in the 1860s. And perhaps it's not surprising that one of them is going to be much more famous than the others. And I think deservedly so. I mean, Mendeleev, did push things slightly further with his very accurate predictions of missing elements. And that's really what caught people's attention. Okay, so I want to show you another periodic table. This is one we've put online. It's at periodicvideos.net. And we've built it using Wix, which is the sponsor of today's episode. Wix is a powerful, elegant tool that can help people at all levels, even me, make amazing websites. Whether it's business or a personal site, or maybe just something in between, Get on Wix, get creating. It's free, highly customizable, as you can see here as I tweak our site. You can start with the template and then just take it in whatever direction you want. It's drag and drop, really intuitive, and there are loads of options. You can just change everything. Get it just how you want it. If you do want to check them out, go to the URL wix.com slash go slash periodic videos. It's on the screen. That'll let them know you came from here and that helps us as well. Hey, and once you've got your own site up and running, why not drop us an email so we can see what you did. That address again, wix.com slash go slash periodic videos. There's also a link in the description. Bit. <laughs> Right. And saliva is actually used in conservation all the time. It's a really gentle cleaning agent. It's 99% water, 1% yeah. enzymes, and it's the enzymes that break down the dirt. So, Wow, you weren't joking. Mm. 
under the tongue. Is this like a known like technique? Yeah, or... let's do a little section here. This is kind of gross. 